Okay, so as of right now, we are recording. Uh-huh. I know I was supposed to uh, uh, for legal reasons. L- for 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 legal reasons, I had to inform you at least. You not trust me? Kevin. So, <laughs> have I ever done anything to betray your trust, Kevin? Well, nothing. Nothing I wanted to bring up in conversation. I didn't want to sour. I, mean, to even I, I didn't want to sour the like strained kind of legal legal warning, like reading the Riot Act. I don't know. It's yeah. a little. A little hostile and aggressive. Well, well, I was going to do. I wanted to do a, a hostile interview with you. I don't think enough people have taken you to task. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I usually I've had a like smooth sailing. It's been it's been a breeze for me. Yeah, yeah. So um, boring public. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much sycophants, ass kissers. That's all. That's all you seem to get, Jim. And now I'm Atlanta's favorite white person for the blacks. <laughs> have, has it been official? Has it been made <laughs> official yet? I lead them through the streets, Kevin, the Pied Piper. Wow. wow. They understand me in a way that others, I don't think, have until this point in my life. Um, so the, uh, the, the the local black population, uh, they're, they're fans of you. Embraced. Oh, wow, can we get this music concrete out here? We've got the actual ATL sirens. Do you hear this? Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. We've got <laughs> urban unrest here down in the ATL. Well, when I, when I moved to Baltimore... I referred to it. I, I initially referred to it as the city of accidents, but then Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore. And then, uh, then, then I had to fine tune that because I realized most of the events that um, the police or ambulances were responding to weren't accidents per se. So I I changed that slogan to city of incidents, and that way it was kind of neutral as to the cause. Your opening song uh, that you were prepared to sing, uh, ah, I'm not a, I'm not a white boy. Can you tell me about this song? It's called "I'm a White Boy." It's by Merle Haggard. Oh, I am a white uh, boy. Yeah, I'm a white boy. Not I am. Mm. Contraction. <laughs> Contraction, yes. <laughs> and I don't know. I think it's kind of benign, but it's radical. I guess to even say that at this point. I mean, the crowd's going to be almost entirely white. And this is, I guess, I'm not sure if it's been clarified, but. For a month, I'm going on tour as the opening act for Hank 3, mm, yes. singing, singing country songs. And uh, I want to do I'm a White Boy by Merle Haggard. And what's, I'm trying to think like the most incendiary line of cases. He's not black and he's not yellow. And then it's something about he doesn't want no handout, live in or part anything they're given. Okay, maybe that's implying that blacks want handouts or something. Maybe that's mm-hmm. a little racist. But Jesus, you know, here's the thing. I went to prison for domestic violence. We're doing a dozen songs where the guy like chops up his girlfriend <laughs> because the bitch was cheating on him. That's all cool. Nobody's offended. You know, I've never committed a hate crime, never encouraged a, an alleged hate crime. But, you know, I can't do a fucking song where I say I don't want a handout and I'm white. <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Well, but, uh, who, and it's your, you, the the band, uh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's the band that you're playing with that doesn't want to do the song. Right. right. Well, the, the way I had intended, I guess the intro music that you played, Ike Turner's The Rooster. I wanted to start off with an Ike Turner instrumental. It's very violent sounding. We walk out, stomp out on the stage to that, then we launch into "I'm a White Boy" by Merle Haggard. So you're going to be going out on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin lapses into it. <laughs> Tell us about that. Tell, 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 tell us about that. Um, uh, yeah, five. I guess I said a month. Five weeks and uh, it's twenty-seven shows right now. Twenty-seven shows in five weeks. Yeah, and we will have two days of practice before the tour starts, and one live show before we actually like go on the tour opening for Hack Three. So that's a little daunting, especially if you haven't done this sort of shit before, like I haven't. But. I don't know, it's like Fear Factor or something. <laughs> or something George Clinton used to do in the 60s, like when he uh, joined the Detroit Lions and got his ass beat. Uh, I, you completely, I will admit you completely Too lost me on that reference. Okay, all right. Oh, completely Paper over my Lion. head. Paper but, Lion was a novel. I think it was turned into a movie with Alan Alda as George Clinton. George Clinton was a writer who was like this skinny Yale type of guy who decided to join mm-hmm. the Detroit Lions. And, you know, nearly got his skull dislocated. <laughs> he played like one play in the NFL. That's what it seems like. I'm not, not known as a singer, but mm-hmm. I can sing, and it's going to confuse people. I'm going to fucking just come out and start yelling at them. <laughs> but I kind of like fucking with their head. I mean, the thing I've worked on the most is just the voice and getting the, the notes right. The voice, the, the, <laughs> the million-dollar voice. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Do, do you have a nickname for yourself? I mean, besides, well, well I guess you have... 
your the truck driving cat. The Nashville cat. <laughs> no, that would be, that would be great. Into a hat of stupid, you know, oh, we're the dry county rebels. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess you are a uh, big red goad. It's big red goad because that was the name of the CD that I did 10 years ago where it was just all covers of trucker songs. Because yeah. all these guys, it was Red Simpson, Red Sovine, Red Foley. Mm-hmm. Everybody's name Red. You're trying to milk that former glory of the Big Red Goad days. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. I'm massaging the prostates of Dave Dudley and Dick Carlos and Red Simpson and Red Sovon and milking their, their uh, seminal clans. Yeah. Which, which I know uh, Brian Clark would want me to say is is has been recently re-released on Discriminate Audio. Ah, nice plug there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can buy the CD, 14 songs for I think like 10 bucks. Yeah. I never had no cash Everybody calls me poor white trash Lived in the swamp all my days Fished in the body for my pay Well, the company man, he came my way Company man stole my gal away Well, the poor white trash, not a nickel in my jeans Poor white trash, don't know what love me Poor white trash never had no fun Poor white trash ain't got no one In the swamps I live In the swamps I'll die For poor white trash no Jeans. Poor white trash, don't know what love means Poor white trash, never had no fun Poor white trash, ain't got no one In the swamps I live In the swamps I'll die For poor white trash, no There's a man named Raymond who I mistakenly called Peter a couple times that makes boiled peanuts, and uh, we may go into a musical combo with him called the Boiled Peanuts with a Z. We'll compete for the uh, little slice of that interracial hip hop market that the Black Eyed Peas have cornered. It's a it's a expanding market. It's expanding market, and now I'm just I'm bursting out on all different angles here, Kevin. That's that's amazing. Yeah. I'm an enigma. Oh, an enigma wrapped in a in a mystery, stuffed into uh, a wife a, beater. A wife beater. <laughs> Wearing a medium fruit of the loom wife beater. Uh, I don't know. What else do you want to talk about? I don't know. The, the book you published. What uh, a gorgeous, lavish. It, it feels so good. It smells so good. It's so hefty. You could beat somebody to death. With that three hundred and sixty-eight page reprint of Answer Me, Kevin, <laughs> it is it is a truncheon of a book. It's a con- concordia. Is that a word? <laughs> it's a, I think con- it's a compendium. Concordance. Uh, what is, is concord- concordance? Sounds like yeah. a religious term. I don't. Know. Concordance is like isn't that like the handbook to the Bible? I I, yeah, I guess I don't know. Protestant out of concordance, but it it uh, collects the first three issues of Ants legendary. Legendary magazine. This is not a fucking zine. I hate zines. Oh, my, yeah. The first three, not the rape issue. The rape uh, issue is available separately. Ra- yes, the rape, rape issue is available separately. And plus, sixty pages of other writing that I've done since getting out of the pokey, including Judge orders Hitler to undergo therapy. Um, what the hell else is in there? Ice I, cream. Taking a, a piece of heaven in your mouth. And, and to uh, to reference back to our introductory song. Ah, I feel your pain, Ike Turner. <laughs> was that was that well, your uh, initial um, wanting wanting to write it about Ike Turner? Is that when you discovered his uh, amazing m- yeah, musical ability? After the Ike Turner show at the Portland Waterfront Waterfront Blues Festival, that's kind of hard to 
Waterfront Blues Festival. Portland Waterfront Blues Festival. You should probably talk to him about that. You should probably have him rename it. So that yeah, so that in future area. interviews you can it'll come off Just a little easier. Roll off my, the tip of my tongue. The Portland Waterfront Blues Festival. He played, and afterwards he's in his spangly MC Hammer looking purple rhinestone outfit. And I went up to him to get an autograph. And the little man was like five two, and had one of the sweetest smiles I'd ever seen in my life. And it got me to thinking. You know what? Just judged on based on her live performances. That Tina Turner is a little bit of a Hellcat and a firecracker. I mean, I could see her scratching him up. She admitted to as much. And I realized, you know, Tina, Tina's music post Ike, she sold millions, got Grammys, but it blew. When he was beating her, she did the best music of her life. And I think at this point, you know, Ike's been more through more than Tina has. Sorry. So I connected with him on a very deep emotional level, which he was entirely unaware of as I stood there staring at him. Okay. Answer me the first three. The uh, scapegoat publishing edition has a has a Hebrew character with a uh, trophy wife on the cover. He does. Yeah, it does. He's like he he just screams Jew. He pulsates Jew. Uh, along or with a who's Jew? Along with a cast of other stereotypical characters. Hollywood types. Yeah, Hollywood was just you know these dystopian futuristic. Miasma that we found ourselves in, that we uh, produced Answer Me. In. So I just wanted a, a street scene and had Nick Dugas, who lived in that area for about 20 years, captured, which I think he did really well. Okay, I'm walking in front of my bay window in my underwear, and there's a gay man looking at me. <laughs> Simultaneously ashamed and, and around. Come on, dog, quit barking. And uh, there's a, a, a punk rock flyer on a, a wall that a a homeless man is urinating on uh, with a band called Felcher listed. What are they called? Fel- Felcher? Felcher. Is that a band? Uh, on uh, It's on the cover of Answer Me, the first three. No, I mean, yeah, Nick, that, that's, that's all Nick's doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you think that's appropriate to have the word Felching? Felcher on the cover of your book? Sure. I think it's more than it's, you know, to have God's giant finger flipping off the world, to have. Uh, and disease-ridden, lice-ridden, amoral, violent, sociopathic characters, you know, dotting yeah. the streets of Hollywood. Yeah, it's, it's all appropriate. Yeah, no, that all that all that I'm fine with. But Felcher. The Felching? The Felching. I'm always, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm against that. Where, where people draw the line. Like, there were Mexican guys in the joint who would say that uh, you can fuck a guy in the ass as long as you don't come. If you really? come, you're a fact. <laughs> where, do you, where do you come up with these arbitrary? Like, okay, all right. I thought it was just if you didn't kiss. So, I might have to go and revise some. Uh, yeah, well, okay. kissing makes them very affectionate and female. That they isn't that the truth? Though they're just doubling their manliness by introducing two penises into the picture. I don't know, that, that's disturbing. That's disturbing, that, that ejaculate. See, I would think that, ejac- I mean, ejaculation is the point, is it not? I mean, of? Uh, uh, of, of, a male, of, of a male seeking sexual gratification. I mean, I, I, think it would, I think it would be actually feminine to, uh, uh, to, to, to worry about not coming just so that you can have the, uh, I, I don't know, the, the, the physical closeness of another human being. Uh, that would seem more fulfilling to a woman than a man, because you know. A lot... Oh yeah, women. You know, women are all soft and the perfume and, and all emotional. They turn you into a faggot. Yeah. Well, so I I, I disagree with the Mexicans uh, in the joint who say that uh, you're you're only gay if you uh, come in another man or on another man while you're having. Do you think sex once with the once an erection has been achieved, once it moves? Once it starts to swell, once tumescence begins, you cross the uh, the magical rainbow bridge. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, th- I think once once there is once once that erection comes into uh, some sort yeah. of contact in a sexual way with a another male, then then that's yeah. pretty gay. It's pretty homosexual. Um, okay, not not that I'm arguing with that premise. What yeah. about all these chicks who are making out and licking each other's vaginas? Because nothing gives me more pleasure than say, you know what, that's okay. Yeah, you're uh, a lesbian now. Well, but I, and but they, I they hold... freak the hell out. I'm not gay. I'm not bi. Yeah. I just like licking women's vaginas and, and bobbling their boobs in my mouth. 
Well, I guess I guess there's a couple of different takes. If if it's done purely for the sexual arousal of a male, then it's just a woman's. It's a continuation of a woman's innate want to uh, uh, for exhibitionism, and they and and actually, I believe it tunes into a man's. Why is this arousing for males though? It's like I don't you know. Hey, honey, uh, I'm going to bring the postman over. We're going to blow each other in front of you. How's that? They're going to get you lubed up, baby. Well, that's that is assuming, that but that's assuming that males and well, males males and wimmels, males and females are are the same and have the same sexual instinct. I think the very fact that they are different that women uh, tend to be more exhibitionistic and ma- males voyeuristic. Uh, then that's what that's what differentiates the two women. A woman making out with another woman to sexually excite a, voy- uh, a voyeuristic male is just understanding of his voyeurism. Whereas if a man was blowing another man, it's not really going to do anything to attract a female viewer, unless unless she's just more deviant than your average. And I'm talking about uh, objective statistics. Gives me a, gives me a headache. <laughs> it annoys me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I like to shame women yeah. who have any hint of a lesbian past. Well, we have to have our hobbies. You know. Chick, huh? You figuring out, Kevin? Chicks? Chicks? No, no. I have absolutely. Uh, I I married one because she's uh, a wonderful girl and um, cleans the house and makes dinner. Um, yeah. And that's and and after that, I, I I figured I don't have to deal with other completely crazy. She seems to be less crazy in less annoying ways than than just about any other woman I've come into contact with. So I kind so, of so so many of them tend to be. Yeah. yeah. See, I think you know fundamentally they're pretty simple creatures, and pretty transparent. It's just that I don't want to believe that they are what they seem to be. Have you ever seen Hank the Third live? Yeah, he's great. Yeah, was he? Was he playing? Is is on the tour that you're doing? Is he going to have both his country band and his punk rock band? Is it actually the same band? Or uh, I think it's the same band minus his fiddler and steel guitar player, yeah. and then they do like metal for forty five minutes. Yeah, Ass Jack. Ass Jack. Ass Jack will be on this tour as well. Ass Jack. And Big Red Goat, back with Power of County, will be the opener. And Power of County is a Portland country band, and uh, every promoter from here to Timbuktu has fucked their name up. Most of them have Power of Country, but I've also seen Power Company. Power Company. And Dynamism of County. They got the county right. Dynamism of County? Dynamism of County. Yeah. That's amazing. That's like somebody went th- put the uh, name like, through... Pitch, like, Translated it and then translated it back. Yeah. It, you beat me to it, yeah. uh, <clears throat> which is actually a lot of fun. Yeah, so uh, we will be new people playing old country music and making it hopefully somewhat new and fresh again. <gasps> well, that's amazing. And I think people will be startled that I can actually hold a tune. That'll be the biggest accomplishment. Now I can sing. It may be reprehensible close maybe it'd be better if society didn't have people like this but yeah it can it can hold a tune it can carry a tune well there's um there's a quote from H.L. Mencken that I've always uh really held on to it's from his book In Defense of Women which I know you're quite sympathetic toward um and it says I hope I need not confess that a large part of my stock and trade consists of platitudes rescued from the cobweb shelves of yesterday uh-huh. And uh, and there we go. Some of the some of the greatest works have already been written, but they've been forgotten. Well, what, what we're doing is we're going into the catacombs and we're opening up the vaults and we're dusting off the giant testicles of Dave Dudley and Red Sovine and Dick Curlis and all the rest of them. Dick Curlis has the deepest fucking voice I've ever heard on a white man. And you know what's even cooler, Kevin? What's He'd that? Wear an eye patch. He would wear an eye patch. Wow. Do you, do so you have this real, <laughs> like, gigantic bald voice with an eye patch? Well, it might be the toughest white guy ever. I got a gal in every eastern town from Boston to 
St. Lou. There's some that I don't even know, but I'm looking forward to cause I like my women everywhere I go. So hold on, big wheels, don't you roll so slow. Big Ann is awaiting in Memphis and Betty Lou in Maine. I got a good old gal in Knoxville, but man, I forgot her name, but not her figure. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I'm a kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, truck driving son of a gun. and the Gothic Theater, you will be uh, doing a show at Dante's in Portland on July 27th. Now, yes. you have a history with Dante's, don't you? I used to uh, work as a bouncer there. I worked in the porno mag, still work for the porno magazine that used to be right above Dante's. Uh, friends with the guy who owns it, one of the net jerks is uh, the co-owner, DP, the Asian doctor. And uh, more of a history, I think what you're alluding to is my joyous, documented history of uh, encounters and altercations with anti-racist skinheads in Portland. I think so. <laughs> that may have been because we were going to play another club, and I think the entire security staff there is basically guys from that gang. Uh. But they got it in their minds that I'm a Nazi, and uh, I guess not really caring much about you know diversity of opinion, they decided I should be exterminated because of that. Well, the best way, so I, I've come to understand it from, from popular uh, culture today, the best way to promote diversity of opinion is to um, limit it to the opinions that um, only promote diversity, diversity of opinion. Right. Yeah, well, they're not, they're not uh, in their own way, they're kind of intolerant. That's why I'd give the edge to the Nazis, just because the Nazis admit they're Nazis. Nothing I hate more than double standards and hypocrisy and idiots acting like Nazis in the name of fighting Nazis. But it should be an interesting show. I've got all sorts of history with Portland, and it'll be joyous coming back there and you know performing in front of all these little fucking wannabe greaser bands who can't even get gigs in Portland. It's like, hey, assholes, I'm a writer, not even a musician. I got a gig, fuck you. I'm <laughs> just rubbing it in their faces, being a dick about it. Well, hopefully, hopefully they'll be able to hear this uh, broadcast uh, and, oh, sure. and, and attend, and maybe they can protest. No, they, you know, they have shut down shows before. They shut down a uh, a non show at that Burbadis Club. Boyd. I guess Boyd got paid for it, but uh, didn't perform. The uh, the local what is it like Coalition for Humanity or something? You know, it's one of these really vague. You know, how could you? What are you? You're against humanity. They but, uh, actually in their in their propaganda flyers, uh, they used a um, they used something that I had designed for a Boyd Rice show in New York, uh, in their when they were trying to shut down the Portland show, which was was mixed for me because it was nice to see my work being, uh, uh, you know, getting out into the world. But then again, it was used to uh, actually shut down the show of the musician that I was trying to promote in the first place. 
I didn't. I mean, wasn't is this just legend? The mafia, if they were going to hit somebody or they were warning somebody, they'd put like a black hand on their window. One of these people like put a rainbow sticker on your car or something. Like you've been you've been visited by the Coalition for Human Dignity. Next time will be a you know a business call. A, an equality an equality sticker. Yeah, we're gonna pound some fucking equality into your head. Uh, they're actually in Atlanta. There is a pretty infamous um, strip club. <sighs> Fuck. Magic what? City or Magic City, the black one. No, no, I think oh, it's the, a, Clare, the Claremont. The, the Claremont. Claremont. The Seventy-year-old women. Yeah, that's where the strippers go to die. And it's you know it's a hipster place, and everybody does coke in the bathroom, and they do alternative karaoke on Tuesday nights. But yeah, it's it's an old flea bag motel uh, above ground and uh, like in the basement. The, the back alleyway, there's a, a really decrepit strip club that hipsters hang out at. I, t- <laughs> I took a picture of a woman's vagina on uh, Ponce de Leon, which is what the, the Claremont Club was on yesterday. And there was this fat, white woman, uh, I don't know, in her 40s, sitting there, and uh, 40, 50 feet across the road, as I zoomed by, I could see that she was sitting there, spread eagle, with a flappy vagina hanging out. So I popped a Uber and pulled around, and we pulled up and snapped a couple photos and plopped it up on my website. Yeah, just sitting there letting her vagina flap in the breeze. She, so, so she had it exposed before you yeah. came along. No, it no unfortunately it wasn't just the, the stunning sight of me <laughs> oozing raw male sensuality that caused her to, to pop open the vagina. It was there before I came along. Oh, okay. So that's you, I mean, because that I, I understand that that is usually the female reaction to the presence. The, the Instant, instant, uncontrolled, embarrassing lubrication. Yeah. <laughs> Except, like, obvious, like, clothes-staining lubrication. <laughs> <laughs> uncontrolled, yeah, over-lubrication. Even, you know, sometimes, like... Accompanied by audible sounds. One of the things uh, you were hoping to accomplish in Atlanta is uh, researching your current, one of your current book projects, if I'm not mistaken. The Encyclopedia of Race. The Encyclopedia of Race. Now, from (laughs) what I understand, that's um, that's a touchy subject. Yeah, these days people are a little tight about race. Can't really uh, <laughs> approach it with anything except sanctimony and egalitarian goodwill. So, so of course, you know, that's, uh, I just saw like <laughs> you've seen the original movie, The Producers. Yes. Like to me, the most perfect comedy ever made, and mm-hmm. that, I just like rented the DVD, and there's a, a bonus DVD where they have Mel Brooks talking about doing it, and you know, having springtime for Hitler back in '68, and still barely 20 years after World War II ended was just so radical <laughs> Mel Brooks uh, who I love he said something about you know well it's my philosophy ring the bell you walk up to the bell you gotta ring it ring the bell so you know there's a giant bell there called race I gotta go up and ring that fucking bell so so, so as a humanitarian effort you are gonna be putting <laughs> together this kind of primer on race and and how race the races can and, racial stereotyping and uh, hope I, you know I, I, I guess in some ways I have an agenda I, I think that I'll be able to pretty much prove as much as it can be proven that equality is a myth and that there there are demonstrable differences between people that race exists I mean that's that's still the mind-blowing one this idea that it's just a social construct of course it's a social construct but you know so is the idea of dinner people still eat dinner <laughs> You know, well, well yeah, and, and just this pro- and and I think uh, yeah, the people aren't equal yet. They are equal in that they're all ethnocentric and they all are somewhat supremacist about their own kind. I don't know if it was rushed in or one of those guys that theorized that you know, biologically people tend to care for and nurture people that look like themselves more than <laughs> animals that don't look like themselves. You're talking um, about Phil- Philip J. Rushton, so, I believe. Name is Rushton, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, why is that such a, a heresy? Makes sense. You know, people have these tribal instincts, just like they have sexual instincts, and if you suppress them for too long, it's going to come out in all sorts of warped and weird ways. You know, these sharp skinheads, what a weird <laughs> mangling of uh, identity and identity politics. And it's the same instinct. They just subvert it, invert it. So, yeah, and it's, I mean, more than anything, you really can't talk about it. Like, we started this interview, but I 
I can't even find a band that wants to play a song called I'm a White Boy. Is that such a, I mean, I'm not white? <laughs> you know, put me in prison, I think the non-whites would think I'm white. Why is that such a, well, the a radical statement? Prisons, prisons by necessity now are racially segregated. Yeah, and not by the design of the wardens, that's... No, no. Uh, against against the wishes of of, of the state, really. Um, yeah. And uh, I believe it was the California prison system where they wanted to just kind of permanently racially um, segregate the prisons so that they could have uh, so they could have a significant reduction in racially motivated gang crime. So some, I mean, that's what always amuses me. Is you could break it down until all there's left is Bosnians in the world, mm-hmm. and the Bosnians would find a way to fucking split up and hate each other and kill each other. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But to to the extent... But then a homogeneous society, uh, much less violent. You, you don't see it... Uh, you don't see the level of violence, say in the Amish community as you do in Los Angeles, which is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the most uh, diverse uh, city in the United States. Los Angeles? Yeah. yeah I would say it probably is. Yeah. With a very low uh, quotient of blacks for a, a major American city. Yeah. Yeah, for all the, the ruckus they raise, all those ri- <laughs> the riots they keep doing out there, yeah, it's like 7% black. Should should we do some sort of kind of wrap up segment? Is there something clever that you can think of? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm drawing blanks, man. All right. Yeah. Well, Jim Goat, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for talking with us here on Hoofprints, the official podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hoofprints. Hoofprints. Hello, this. Hello, this is Jim Goat, and you're listening to Hoofprints. There we go. I'm going to run that. Publishing.com. Oh, sh- Hello. This is Jim Goad. You're listening to Hoofprints on the Scapegoat Network. <laughs> Every single show. Every single fucking show. Every single fucking All right. show. All right, Jim. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bro. Talk to you later.